Good evening, folks. Thanks for making time for us and spending the next hour with us. Uh, sorry for the technical glitch outside and with the AV. Hopefully, the rest of the presentation is smooth sailing. Um, we have a lot of exciting information to share with you. Uh, as Andy spoke in, in the morning session, uh, technical glitch continues. So we're going to talk about Amazon Tech Extract today. Um, it's part of the perfect. Thanks. It's part of the computer vision solution for and the AI services stack on the top. Uh, again, the objective at the AI services has always been to take this really hard problem, where otherwise you would have to collect a lot of data, do a lot of experimentation around models, and train new models, and keep iterating and improving these models, deploy these models. And as you find issues, go and fix them. And we want to abstract all those problems, all those kind of non-differentiated heavy lifting from your business so that you could focus on what grows your business, makes your customer more happy, you know, uh, streamline your workflows if you may in cases. And you know, uh, last couple of years, we have launched a lot of uh, computer vision services around, we call it Amazon recognition. And they were primarily focused on images and video. And a lot of customers said, hey, awesome, you guys keep saying you are in the charter of solving problems with visual content. And guess what the visual content that bothers us the most? It's actually documents. A lot of the documents are still scanned and images and, and you know, there's kind of still not digitized in the sense we would be able to extract all information naturally from it. And we are having this really bad trade-offs when we are dealing with this large volume of documents. Um, and can you do something about it? So uh, we said, well, let's first find out if this is a meaningful problem to solve, because we can like, yeah, you're really document. So, uh, and as we found out, and I'm sure as we all know, that document is a very, very important tool for communication among organization departments and, and you know, uh, your employees uh, is a primary tool for record keeping. And it also helps you with collaboration across multiple kind of uh, units. Now, this is true for a multiple verticals in the industry, right? If you look at the list of customer industry and verticals that we found that uses document predominantly for these primary purposes, it goes on and on. We, we just captured a few to kind of highlight the problem. So that kind of, OK, document's important. Um, so let's introduce you to one such document. This is a uniform residential loan application. Now, if you look at this, this is typically what you would fill up if you were to get a loan for whatever purpose. In 2016, there's about 16.3 million such documents were processed in US only, processing a total of about $2.1 trillion of business. So this seems like a very important document. Let's look at the next document. I'm hoping you know this one better. And by the way, if you haven't filed your 2017 tax, it's already late. So this is your W-2 form. This is what you would typically file with your tax return. And, and the estimation for 2018 is that about 240 million W-2s get formed in US only. Very important doc. A lot of information that is really, really impacts your life, my life, business lives. So, okay, we, we kind of figured out, yeah, document's really important. Then why do we need to process these documents, right? And you'll hear this theme again and again. Why is it important to digitize? Why is it important to process documents? Because if you have digitized these documents, you have processed the document, converted them into a form as attributes and metadata and text, you could create much larger search and discovery systems, right? All your document archives are searchable now. You could do a simple thing, show me all documents where the tax amount is $100 and you get the 5,000 documents. It's easy to do if you have a system like that. If you're running a business, if you're an enterprise, compliance and control is very hard with physical documents. Whereas with digitized, searchable, data extracted from document, it's much easier. And then finally, if you imagine processing an invoice, processing a receipt, Today needs a lot of manual intervention still 
especially if the input is a paper document or a scan document or an or a, a image, well, if you can extract information from this document, business process automation becomes that much easier, right? There are some processes. We also found that people are actually processing documents today. To be fair, there are solutions that exist today. And what we found is there are largely three solutions. And in most cases, actually in the most sophisticated cases, all three of them have to be applied at the same time. The first one is, guess what, the good old human being. We look at a document, we then go key in the, all the values into a into an application and then we hit a save and that's a manual processing. There's a fairly old technology called OCR, optical character recognition. People use that to extract text. And then some people figured out that the combination of these two can be enhanced with creating templates. And these templates understand the document and the layout and specific structure and they could use these to extract a lot of information. Well, that's awesome except for we found that all of them are extremely limiting. So let me walk you through why they're limiting. Manual processing tends to be fairly expensive, and it's not because that an individual human is charging more, it's just that most of these human workflow needs multiple consensus-based systems. So you need five people to say the same thing before you can accept that an answer, and we'll tell you why. They're largely error-prone. Because, you know, if you look at a more complex form, and if I don't understand anything of tax, my interpretation of that form would be very different than a CPA who's looking at the same form. So it's, by definition, error prone. And it takes a lot of time. Because we do all take vacations and whatnot. So let's show you a challenge of manual processing. And again, I really believe that the, pro the problem is not here with the human reviewer, it's the problem in the complexity of the documents, right? This is a particular tax form. There's a particular section of the tax form we are zoomed in to show you. When we asked human being to digitize this, to extract information for this, these are the four outputs we get, got from four different people. Somebody said, this tells me that exempt is true. Somebody said, well, 28 is true. Somebody said that particular QPP, CPP is true, and so on and so forth. Variable output, different people saying different things, inconsistent, because 28 true doesn't really mean much to you, right? It's very inconsistent. And then as a result, what we end up doing is we, end up passing, we ended up passing this through 12 different people to see who says, and you know, majority says something, then that has to be true. Right? Consensus based. So, a, a very expensive, makes it very time consuming. Let's look at OCR. Uh, a fun bit of information for you guys, uh, some of you might already know this. We found that back in 1913, there was a device invented called Optophone. It was a very manual device, and that could actually scan pages. And so, it was low accuracy, it was you know, very limited. I have, I have a strong feeling that OCR hasn't gone much beyond that. It's still known for its limitation. It's still high, low accuracy, uh, in a fairly low accuracy. And it could only do simple documents. And the reason it can do simple documents is OCR is awesome if you want to get a bag of words, right? No ordering, no structuring, just a bag of words. If that's your problem, OCR does it really well for you. Let's give you an example of what that means. If you take a two-column document like that, think of a newspaper or a magazine, look at what OCR would create. This is the first two lines run through an OCR system. It gives you as if there is no difference between those two lines. A bag of words again. Very hard for you to infer information from it. So this is a dump and not an information system. Limitations among many that we found cannot do multi-column, cannot do orientation text. A lot of more complex documents have text written like this and like this. OCR completely fails in those. Doesn't do stylized fonts very well. So if you imagine that if you have a brochure where the top is written in a very stylized scripted font, OCR would completely bomb on it. Let's look at another example of a challenge with OCR. So if you look at this, 
Look at the output from a table. Now, people solve this. Guess how they solved it? They say, you know what? If I use some smarts of space delimiter, then maybe I could get the right information from it. Well, it doesn't work really well, especially if the columns have multiple rows in them. All bets are off, right? Not very useful extraction of information. Let's look at this form element. Here we are trying to say that the full name of the person has three elements. First is John, middle is X, last is uh, Doe. All these three elements are part of the full name. You have a date of birth, which has the month is 01, date is 01, and year is 1971, way older than anyone in this room, right? And uh, the gender is male. Well, guess what OCR gives you? This. Take a second and read that. It's very hard to extract the information from this thing. Again, the bag of words. I keep repeating that word because it's really frustrating. That's what OCR gives you. So there is no grouping. There is no association. All the relationships are completely missed. Any symbols and glyphs, which capture a lot of information. Glyphs are things like checkboxes, radio buttons, symbols in the document that tells you something completely missed. What are the challenges of using template? Well, to begin, uh, to use a template-based solution, you need to start with OCR, and we talked at length about the challenges of OCR. So, uh, you know, your, your chain is only as good as the weakest link. Here, OCR becomes the weakest link. You need to do a significant number of software development, because understand what these are trying to do. If you look at this previous example, you would go and tell that template system that that first block Identify a block, I'm gonna look at this geometrical area, that would be a block, that would have a full name, and the full name would be broken down into first, middle, and last, and that template software would then run on top of the OCR extraction to give you meaningful information. Now, all you need to change is the order of first, middle, and last, and boom, the template is broken. So extremely fragile, extremely brittle, breaks very easily and doesn't scale very well. So let's look at, show you an example of why it doesn't scale very well. So let's look at the W2 form. We found hundreds of different variants of W2 form. By the way, these are not, you know, might be even simple changes among them, but there are 100 different variants of W2 form. One single form, the same information. Just some lays out it differently, ordering is off, you know, positioning are off, which means if you want to create a system to extract information from W2 for your application, you need to maintain template for each of these structures. Very, very difficult problem. Doesn't scale very well. Well, you guys are sitting there and thinking, well, we are human beings. We can see this so easily. So why is it so hard for a computer, right? I thought of it too. So we done a little bit experiment to show you why is it so hard for computer. Well, it's hard for human being as well. But we have been trained to look at these things in a certain way. And so some of the things we take for granted when it comes to system, uh, I just want to show you why it's hard for a computer. These are four different forms. These are the W9 forms, more or less similar looking, more or less same structure, not a lot of variant, by the way. The, the image on the bottom is what we call the RGB channel, red, green, and blue, uh, blue channel. That's a, that's a pixel information from this document. Look at these four documents, very similar document, just the input is different. Not a single corresponding pixel value is in common which means when a computer is looking at, a system is looking at this document, it sees four different, completely different entities. So how do you find meaning from that? How do you then scale it, and how do you make it work for your business? Well, this is why we worked for a long time, and today very excited to announce the preview of Amazon Textract. You'll be able to text, extract any amount of text and data from any amount of documents. And to tell you more, I'm gonna invite my colleague, Wendy, uh, to the stage to walk you through the product and its features. Thank you, Ranju. Hi. So I'm going to talk about Amazon Textract, the features that we are previewing today. As Ranju mentioned, we are launching text extraction, OCR++, and we believe that we have built a service that improves upon what classic OCR does. I'll walk you through some examples of what that looks like today with Amazon Textract. 
We also extend uh, extraction capabilities to extract structured data um, in the form of tables as well as form elements. So when you look at this document, what you see is a two column document and what you see is the building blocks that we extract text um, out by. Our smallest building block is the word. And we build upon that to the line, to a paragraph, to a column. What this gives people is the power to control this, uh, these groupings to the level that they would use for their uh, specific use case. One's, one uh, possible use case is NLP, where this is very useful in actually understanding the reading order of this document. So our blocks, as I mentioned, are, are the following. So to get text extraction from Amazon Textract, you would use the Detect Document Text API. And you can provide an image or a PDF. We support uh, multi-page multi PDFs. And you can submit these as either a blob or a location of an Amazon S3 object. And what you get are blocks and their relationships to each other. For table extraction, what you would provide is a document with a table. We would detect that table. And similarly, we will give you the building blocks to understand what's in that table. At the lowest level, we have cells um, that belong to a table, that belong to a page. And contained therein are the words that are belonging to a cell. So whether that's words or a line, um, it can be, as Ranju mentioned, multi-line. And we will still group it as it was meant to be read. We also return confidence scores and their relationships. For table extraction, you would use our structured data uh, API called Analyze Document. And you would uh, pass through table uh, to features types and uh, enable table de detection. Similarly, we have our form extraction API. Uh, and here you would take a similar document. You could pass through a tax form. Within a tax form, what I'd like to point out is that you may need text extraction, you may need table extraction, and you may need form extraction. For us, a form is uh, elements that are closely or tightly associated. It could be the name and uh, Michael, and these are a key and a value, and these have a relationship to each other. So you would also use the Analyze Document API, and you would um, provide forms as the input parameter for feature types. For Amazon Textract, we are offering sync and asynchronous APIs. When you think about the synchronous APIs, we think um, uh, these are most appropriate for use cases where latency is really important. So if you're developing mobile applications, um, for example, taking a picture of a receipt and needing to get data off of that document, the synchronous API supports images, single page documents. For larger uh, workloads, multi-page documents, up to 3,000 pages in a PDF, as well as uh, bulk processing, we have asynchronous APIs. So let's go back to the beginning and talk about um, some of the problems that classic OCR has not solved yet. Uh, when you look at the input and the output, what you saw previously was a gap in the information. You gave uh, a document as an input, and what you got was less information. You lost something along the way. Either you lost something or something got confused, so you changed it. With Amazon Textract, text extraction becomes simplified. There's not a gap between what you see or what you have provided and what is returned. And so here in the output, you see that we are able to extract um, the data as it was originally. Similarly with tables, that gap is also closed. So we recognize that there is a table here. We recognize that the, there are words in these cells that are meant to be grouped together. If you look at one example here, not only are we able to associate that here's a cell, here is associate, another associated cell, but we're also able to detect what you 
don't know if this pointer works. Here, I'd like to point out, a, a, kind of refer back to what Ranju had said, which is if you use kind of a basic rule or a heuristic to, to say that, you know, lines are about this tall, what you would do is end up cutting this into another row. With form extraction, we're able to kind of go one step further and say, there's a label and there's a the value, and these are associated. And they can take kind of, they can be anywhere on the document. And we understand not only that basic level of association, saying that this is a key, this is a value, but also understand that they might have higher levels of association. So we tell you, or we've told you that, you know, what we have built solves many of the problems that you may have encountered before. Um, now I'm going to kind of take you one step further into how we solve this. So one of the things, um, a lot of the problems that I, we, we talk about here are kind of if things were perfect. And then you get into the real world where your customers or some of the documents that you encounter may take any shape or form or any orientation. If you send this, these images to a kind of a simpler model, this second, if you were, let's pretend that you were really far away from this and couldn't see the text. You may try to read it anyways. You might not actually realize that this is the wrong orientation. So a classic OCR would get the right text on this document doesn't know that it's supposed to orient this a certain way before it can read it. With our deep learning models, we're able to understand all the things you would need to do to, to these documents to enhance the, the extraction of data. Going back to structure variability. In a world where you have to build templates, it's very expensive, it's time consuming, and it breaks. And oftentimes, if you see a new form, the customer experience is it's not supported. And so we have built deep learning models that say, forget the template. Our, our models are template agnostic. What they understand is that there's data that's presented, and it uses the visual cues that we as humans use to understand that you know, there's some text here. It's asking me a question, and here's a value that's associated with it. Document variability. What you saw previously was just one document with many, many layouts. Take that one step further and say, there are many types of documents. Some are multi-column. Some of the, them look like they're multi-column, and they're not associated with each other. Some go this way, some go that way. And we use deep learning to understand you know, each document has, uh, may have inherent properties that um, give it meaning. And it gets harder. What you see here is a table. What a computer might see here is a trapezoid. And we can detect that this is a table. And we can actually understand the information here um, using deep learning to understand that there's something that we need to fix about this to optimize it. So with that, we can still extract the correct information from this. This probably holds true the most for receipts. If you were to find a flat receipt, a planar, that has not been crumpled, I will I give you a prize. Um, receipts have 3D deformations. They change how words um, appear. Um, it's very hard to draw a straight line where these words are. And we are solve for this as well. Or we're using segmentation rectification to solve for this, to optimize this, so that text can still be extracted from these documents. So going back to tables, that problem about having um, these rule or the problems that you see with rules. First, we understand, I don't know if you can see this table. First, we understand where is the table. That's the first problem. But then you ask, you know, some things look like a table. Is that a table? Is that a column? And we actually understand tables even when there aren't explicit grid lines. 
and under are able to identify those cells. And what you see here is that even if columns and rows have different sizes, we're able to understand the entire context of this, to understand that this is a table and these are where the cells are. With form extraction, we also take a similar approach where we identify where units are, things that have relationships, and many relationships. John is related to first, first is related to full, John is related to full name, and so there's so much information that's being communicated in this document, and we are extracting that information. And so going beyond this, uh, what it really is a form. Uh, so when you think of a form, you might say a W-2 is a form. When we think about a form, we say, here, it's actually just text. There's no fields or value up in the header. There's actually a table here. Um, I learned this when I was learning more about the W-2. There's a table there. There are form elements here. Um, and so form elements are especially interesting and tricky in that they can take any number of directions. And I'll show you more on the next slide. That seems simple enough. This man's name is John Doe. And the label is on top. And it's looking down at John. Somewhere else on that same document, and this is quite common, actually. Um, you might have to fill it out this way. And so you start to have conflicting rules for the computer and the model to understand. And using deep learning, we're able to understand that these don't actually necessarily have to be in conflict. Something that's also quite useful, um, for, uh, at least from the feedback that we've heard from customers, is actually understanding what is the confidence around a null uh, value. You might not, OCR uh, may not pick up, up anything, but that doesn't mean that it's necessarily null. So we also identify where a value is supposed to be and identify whether there is a value within it and provide you a confidence score to make decisions using that information. So I'm gonna walk through a few reference implementations about the common use cases that we're hearing from our customers. So kind of the, the classic text extraction use case is index and search. So you can use a lambda function or use batch and call images or documents that are, that are already stored in S3, run it through Amazon TextTrack, get that text, send it to Elasticsearch, and be able to search millions of documents quite quickly. Form capture. This is one of my favorites, uh, which is oftentimes what you do uh, with your phone is um, you type in a lot of information. And you get really excited when you see a credit card scanner or a check deposit uh, image capture. But that's about kind of where it ends. And so what we see, or what we um, have seen some customers start to POC, is form capture, which is, if I'm entering my taxes on my phone, can I just take a picture of something? Do I have to enter 25 values for 25 fields on my little phone? <laughs> and so uh, using Amazon TextTrack, you could add this to your mobile application to enable real-time or near-real-time near applications. NLP, I'm super excited about this use case as well, which is people have large document archives and they don't know what to do with this information. One possibility is NLP. But as Ranju pointed out, taking a bag of words and sending it to NLP is as good as taking a text extraction, mixing it up, and telling someone to read this and make sense out of it. And so with Amazon TextTrack, you're able to retain the structure as somebody reading it would read it and send it to NLP to get insights that you couldn't access before. We have a few uh, 
launch customers that we're super excited about. We have Roche, Alfresco, and Cox Automotive. Three very different customers with very uh, cool use cases you can check out on our, our reference customer page. One of our customers is with us, um, Alfresco, who is a partner. And they have been in the document capture business for many years. So I am going to invite John Newton, CTO of Alfresco, to describe how, higher will, or how Amazon Tech Track will uh, help him. Thanks, Wendy. I don't know about you, but this is, to me, actually really exciting stuff. Um, it's because of my background. I've been in this field for a very long time. I'm the co-founder and CTO of Alfresco, and before that, I was the co-founder of Documentum. And in being in this industry for so long, one thing becomes really clear. One is that there's a lot of business information that is simply locked up in unstructured content, not in structured databases, but actually in unstructured content. And a very big chunk, perhaps the largest chunk of that, is actually in scanned paper in the form of things like uh, accounts receivable, accounts payable, claim forms, all sorts of stuff. Just huge mountains of paper that have been digitized. So I want to talk about how this relates to us. Why are we up here? Um, who are we? Uh, and then the need for a more intelligent way of doing OCR. And then how we can blend Alfresco and Amazon Textract together to create a more effective solution. And I'd like to go through a few use cases as well. So uh, quickly, uh, who is Alfresco? Well, um, a group of us went and started Alfresco uh, in the UK originally in 2005. Um, and doing this, we started with a business model, which at the time was relatively new, which is to be open source. And being open source, we are open in everything, you know, just in communications, our processes, our architecture, everything. And as a result of that, we have a very large uh, community of developers as well. Builders are important to us, just like to Amazon. And we also have 200 partners, many of which actually deal with the problems that Amazon Textract uh, is actually uh, dealing with. Um, the company has over 300 employees, 320 employees, 11 million users around the world, kind of split between the US and Europe, um, and then a little bit of the rest of the world, and over 1,300 customers. So why is there a need for this? Well, paper is simply expensive. Uh, it was somewhere around 1990, a little bit before, that the crossover point of handling information electronically versus paper, you know, just got much cheaper for uh, electronically yet we still haven't quite cracked it yet. Why isn't paper, you know, the paperless office here today? Um, it is expensive, and it's also expensive because it's taking up really valuable real estate as well. It becomes a real problem in our major cities. Also, um, users just want to use these things to capture information. It's so much easier. I just point at it, I collect it, and then I just want to pass it on to another business or to my own business. Um, and if you don't do that, then there's manual entry and actually manual correction of even old style OCR. It's very slow, it's very error prone. Um, but that information is so critical. If I take and scan it, that's not the end of the process. That's only the beginning of the process. It's really important to extract the information, that type of information that Wendy was showing you to connect the documents to the business processes in the business applications like CRM or ERP or any number of different types of enterprise systems. Extracting that key value in tabular data is absolutely critical because those are the things 
that you're scanning to actually update and input, input into things like uh, your invoices, your purchase orders, or any other accounting information or compliance information. And then storing the documents, if we can extract this information, hey, we can actually find stuff now. And just doing plain old OCR didn't really do that. Now we can actually take semantic uh, information from here and, and raise the weight of that information that's being added in and make it far easier to find that information. It also means far better compliance as well because that information is important to demonstrate that you're following procedures, especially with things like Sarbanes-Oxley or any number of regulatory reasons to do this. So, here comes Amazon Textract, and it now allows us to move beyond just digital transformation to automatic transformation. You know, when Wendy showed me this, uh, you know, my eyes probably were just wide open because I, I, I swear I've waited almost a career for this type of technology to come along. And when uh, deep learning became so much better than old styles of machine learning, um, it was kind of clear it was coming, but it just didn't come until today. So let me show you a little bit of how this would actually work. So, process starts by some sort of image capture. Uh, it could be multifunction printer is increasingly a uh, big way in which uh, information is scanned in and brought in. And this is becoming a, a, quite quickly a dominant way in which we're capturing that information. So an application will provide the user interface to capture that, that document. Then the Alfresco system as content services will take and store that information and transform it um, in a number of different ways. But here we can use Amazon Textract as the extraction um, of structured and textual information rather than something like OCR. It can also provide us with geometry and the geometry of where those words are is also important so that we can semantically uh, attach that information to the right business information in other systems. Um, it also provides a mechanism as well to um, redact information, especially things like personally identifiable information, which is what GDPR is all about as well. So the geometry is important. And then the structure is incredibly important as well, because you can see that just a bag of words just does not help you match up what's in the document with the business context. Now, that comes back, and we can now attach it back to the original document. They can sit side by side, and now we can take the information and apply and create new metadata that will make it easier to find information. Also, to connect the documents to, say, SAP or Salesforce.com, um, and go ahead and build the business connections, those relationships between the content and the document itself. We can also now index it as well. And having that semantic information can help us weight the information more effectively. So now, okay, it's not just a bit bucket where we take and store stuff. We can now make a lot of information that was not actionable just sitting in boxes. It can now be very actionable for things like research or whatever. Now we can find that information far more effectively. So the user interface goes and presents the information. We can now go and search the index, find that information, find it versus the, the metadata, format results, and then present the results, as well as some of the, the contextual information that Amazon Texttract provides us as well. So that's the technical view of what's going on. Where is this important? Well, I can't think of one single industry where paper is still not important, or where managing in, uh, images is, you know, is, is just gone away. Even big companies that begin with the letter G and are very colorful have a lot of paper and forms that they have to deal with internally. So let me just pick out a few of the examples in here. Um, I said one of the largest areas in, in uh, 
content and content management is actually in uh, some of the financial documents. So transactions and logistics records. So accounts receivable, accounts payable uh, represent a huge number of documents and connecting that into ERPs uh, such as SAP. Another one is government records and archives where um, governments around the world are now mandating that information must be digital. We need to take it out of the big, huge warehouses and make it accessible, especially for us, the citizens. And if you've ever bought um, a house, and I've gone through this a couple times fairly recently, you have the loan applications where there's lots of paper. I scan it in, I send it to the bank, and unfortunately, my bank is a bit backwards that that process took a very long time. Um, uh, there's things like media management and certainly medical records as well. There's just a wealth of different information that can now be put to use. And if we dive into this a little bit, um, we did talk about loan applications in particular. And on average, it takes a person six to eight weeks to close the mortgage loan. And any time you get that wrong, and you can see all the examples of anything from the W-2 to your financial records, your bank statements, and whatever, when things go wrong, you know, that just disrupts the process. The customer is not happy, and the bank is essentially losing money. So actually making this process more effective, more efficient, goes straight to the bottom line of the financial institutions and actually makes us, the consumers of banking, a whole lot more happy. So, thank you. I'd like to hand it back to Wendy. I think my mic's back on, okay. So just to wrap up, I'm going to talk about the benefits, talk about pricing, and talk about where we're going to be. So uh, to summarize, uh, with Amazon TechStrack, you'll be able to accelerate data capture, uh, eliminate manual effort, lower your document processing costs. Uh, there's no ML experience required to get set up. You can just call an API, and you get your text and structured data. Pricing. Take a minute. So that ranges between less than a penny to a few pennies for text extraction, table extraction, and form extraction. And we have tiered pricing starting at 1 million pages per month. And the unit here is uh, a page or an image. So a PDF page or a JPEG or PNG count as one, one page process. To help you get started, we have free tier um, for three months. And you can process uh, up to 1,000 pages for text extraction and 100 pages for structured data extraction. Today, we're available in preview in four regions. To learn more, sign up for our preview. Uh, you can visit this website. Oh, sorry, let me let, let you actually take a picture of that. And that's it. Thank you. Okay. Any questions, folks? Can you? Can you turn on that mic? Yeah. Winnie. Oh, when is this going to be HIPAA compliant? What was that? HIPAA compliance for this service. Uh, we just announced preview. OK. So <laughs> when we are ready for general availability, I'm sure we'll let you know when the compliance stuff would come in. But that, I, you know, I think, as uh, uh, John called out, it, it's a really important service to get right for um, compliance and regulatory needs, so we are very aware of the needs there. Okay. Good question, thank you. Hey, so uh, we've been seeing a lot of use cases on how this could work with forms and tables and data that's structured that way, but 
I was thinking of what about a use case where you wanted to use, use this in, let's say, an augmented reality situation where you want to look at a sign and then detect that text and then translate it? Uh, would that be possible with this, uh, with this system? Would be an overkill. Uh, so we do, uh, there's another product we have in the AI ML services stack called Amazon Recognition. And recognition actually is really the right tool for that because that's where we want to extract sparse text from images. So if you're looking at a street sign, you have you know, up to 50 words. You don't want to bring this into, in for that. So I think text, you, know, you could look at recognition text in image. That'll probably be the answer for you. Okay, thanks. Thank you. When would uh, handwritten recognition come into play? Or do you, would, would you anticipate supporting that in the future? What was that? I didn't... Handwritten. Handwriting. Handwritten. Within uh, Amazon yeah. Text Track? Yes. Um, yeah, we can't, you know, it's something we are looking at. Uh, it's a, as you can imagine, it's a really much harder problem. Yeah. Um, my handwriting even I don't understand, so later on computer vision. Uh, but, you know, as a general purpose service, when we are launching it, we want to be high accuracy for all different ed edge cases and use cases. So uh, we don't have a date for that yet. Thank you. Now, to be fair, one of the things we will work with our customers in this preview period to understand, does it help you if we can at least tell you that there is handwriting in this document so that you don't you know, rely on a complete automation and you would know that you need to flag that document for some you know, human processing if needed be. Maybe that, those are the things we'll look at. A couple of quick, couple of quick questions. Uh, really good stuff, by the way. Um, have you looked at uh, supporting uh, government issued documents like driver's license and passports i mean the uh, i think we you know the it's worth reiterating this right what we think of document is anything that has more than 50 words right so that's our definition of document without a document the representation the manifestation of the words could be in dense text prose like you're reading left to right or in columnar view or it could be as a table, which is a bunch of rows and columns, or it's forms. And what forms to us is a associated keys and values, right? A field name with a value for that field uh, position. So a passport is nothing but a form, because it's a bunch of you know, field name and values. If you look at a driver license, it's also a form, right? So to that extent, the best part of the solution is, the best part of Amazon Textract is that it would support a large variety of documents out of the box. Got it. So again, from what I understand from your response, you don't look at it as a specific template. It's like completely agnostic of it. And the you exact just opposite of it, right? Yeah, we actually yeah. don't rely on any templates at all. Correct, correct. So second question was, uh, in a given document, if you have images embedded, like a logo of a company, for example, what do you do with it? Do you skip those logos and then put it aside, throw them away, or just keep them as metadata associated right. with the document? Right now, this solution is focused on detecting text, characters, and words, as Wendy talked about, right? the blocks we call it, which starts with a character, builds up into the word, builds up into the line, builds up into the paragraph, and then tries to figure out the layout from a columnar perspective and whatnot. Um, we, again, have different solutions. For instance, Amazon Recognition, which is great for detecting objects, and maybe that's a place some of these would be solved. But for text, Amazon Text Track, the focus is detecting characters, words, and lines. Got it. Thanks. It seems to be a really great product, and we have been waiting for this kind of product for a very long time. But yeah, uh, how many languages does this uh, Text Track support? I love you guys. We are in preview again. Um, today. <laughs> of course, I know that English no, is. No, this is, I, I, I'll tell you, Jeff will talk about Amazon being a day one, and I believe you guys keep us day one. Um, <laughs> so, you know, the uh, part of the teams are here. You know, you guys go figure out the language story. No, I think at this point, we are focusing on the Latin scripts, right? Okay. So, inherently, we'll support English and most of the European languages. Uh, and, you know, language is part of a roadmap. Once, when, when we come to GA, you know, the general availability, I think we'll have a bit more meaningful answer for you. Yep. Well, the second question is, um, of course, you are now kind of uh, uh, trying to get these uh, columns and then trying to get the uh, key value pairs. What if there aren't any key value pairs, just the values alone? How would you extract that value or extract that value? So I think those, we have to look at those formats, right? So those won't be forms. So a good example of that is receipt, right? 
You don't necessarily receipt have a notion of these are items and these are prices in all receipts. Uh, and so what you might find, we might, we might choose to support it in a completely slightly different way. Uh, but yeah, we, we know what you're talking about. And, and right now we are focused on, as, as John called out, if you look at the sort of problem space, there's lots to do here, clearly. Uh, we have scratched the surface. But I think we have scratched the surface which helps a big building block that kind of removes a lot of the hurdle for our customers and allowing partners like Alfresco Build Solution to imagine if my mortgage application, though I've only done it twice in my entire lifetime, still waiting for six to eight weeks, biting my nail, knowing when the outcome, it could happen instantaneously, that could be magical. So we focused on this kind of big areas of forms and tables, and I'm sure those other formats you're talking about is something we'll look at once we have solved this space well. Sure. Uh I mean, related to this one, that let's say if you are not recognizing that one, will you at least give those values to us so that we can... Absolutely. That, that's the whole part of text track, right? Without keys. Our OCR itself is smart enough to tell you that we found it in a layout format, which is distinctly different. We might not at launch be able to tell you that we think it's an item and that's a price, but it'll be layout much better that you could probably get a lot of information from it as is. Can you combine this with the other product that has been launched, Ground Truth? Because now it seems like you, know, you are giving the labels and values. I'm thinking that way. So can we combine this with Ground Truth? You, you can absolutely combine whatever order of, or, as many services of AWS you use, the better for us. So combine, go, combine away. Yep, thanks. Thank you. So acknowledging this is preview, but looking ahead to GA and things like compliance, can you talk a little bit about data pr privacy and security? So, oh, so if you are, you know, have an image in S3, I assume Texttract is somehow extracting and processing that so, somewhere. So, good, good question. Very good question. It's worth calling out. You know, with every service, your content is your own. We do not, Amazon Textract will not use your content for any purpose, viewing, training, modeling, without explicit consent from you. Which means I would worry about that security than this security more. I, like, literally, we are so secure. That doesn't, that doesn't sound very secure. Or private. Um, so your data is yours. Security is entirely up to you how you want to use that. We, if you don't allow us, you don't give us explicit consent to use this data for training and improvement of our service, we literally just use it in transition and, and it's kind of end-to-end you know, -end encrypted. We in memory do the conversion for you, analysis for you, and the data is not even looked by our engineers. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Bernadette Nixon with Alfresco. We've got a demo that you know, showcases also the stuff that we've been talking about this evening. So if you'd like to come and see us at, uh, on the quad, we're in the quad in the uh, Aria at uh, booth 330. We'd love to see you. Thank you. Hi. Uh, so as you have already mentioned that you're not supporting different languages, but uh, what about some of the cursive fonts? Uh, like block fonts are very easy to figure out as I could see from the examples that you've shown. Uh, but some of the fonts are a little cursive in nature. So would those be supported? Yeah, we'll, in we'll, we don't have a clear answer on that. So I think this is something, but as we're getting into the GA journey, we'll figure out Scripted fonts are easier to detect than handwriting, right? Uh, in fact, if you look at uh, some of the work we have done in the image space with, in, in Amazon recognition, we do really well with cursive fonts. Uh, but whether it, it comes into this product and applies is something we need to look at. Uh, what about uh, different font sizes in the same paragraph? Uh, let's say, for example, the same paragraph, one line is a different font size, and uh, another par uh, second line is a different uh, font size. Would that make a difference, or is it still the same application applies. I don't think it should, but it depends. You may have a, a super edge case, but it, it should, it's uh, So adaptable. it's basically, my use case is, uh, sometimes what happens is in a, pre, uh, in a predefined document, the end user fills up something. So he might end up filling it in a different font size. And we provide an option to increase or decrease the font size. Yeah, so we have an optimal, uh, we, we have more specifications in the documentation, but we can detect a wide range of font sizes. Thank you. Well, thank you, folks. Hopefully, you have a great evening. And thank you, John, for spending the time with us. We are very excited about this partnership. Thank you.